Good morning, Warriors on a Mission. Good morning, good morning. Thank God for another blessed day. Thank God that he, we're still here with a purpose. With a purpose. How many times do you think about the fact that God has you here on this earth, right in the only position that you can handle on purpose? You may look around and say, man, I'm a mama, I'm a daddy. I got five kids. I got 10 kids. I'm an aunt. I'm an uncle. I'm a grandmother. And you may look around and say, man, I just feel like I'm not doing enough. But let me explain something. God has you here on purpose. And I can only imagine that you are doing a fine job. Why do I say that? Because if you wasn't, God been and gave you the eviction notice. And you wouldn't be in your situation anymore. So it's odd that all this is coming out. I don't know if many of you all may have noticed. I don't use notes and none of that stuff. I don't prepare what I'm going to say. God just gives it to me. And so I'm saying it like that because he's putting all this together right now as we speak. So when you think about the fact that you are in a position... You, like I said, you might be a husband, you might be a wife, whatever it is that you're doing. And you may sometimes feel like, man, I feel like I'm overloaded. I want to encourage you on today. Stay on your assignment. Stay on your assignment. You are doing your assignment that God gave you. And you are the only one that can handle that assignment. Look around. And sometimes you feel like I'm not qualified. Sometimes you feel like, God, I wasn't ready. Or sometimes you may feel like, God, this is just too much. I want you to understand that God is right there with you on your assignment. He sent you on your assignment. He may, it may be a horrible situation right now. But God sent you there. And if you're a child of God, God has to send the healing to the situation. What am I saying? Well, when you, if you're a child of God, you got the Holy Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit heals. Well, he sent you with the Holy Spirit to heal somebody. And it might be your children. It might be your nieces and nephews. It might be your spouse. But God has you in this Hard assignment for a purpose. Well, I love the way God is already putting this together. If you'll turn with me to Joshua, the second chapter, one through four is where we're going to be covering. God gave me this last night. Joshua, the second chapter, one through four. He really gave me three and four. Those were the two verses that he gave me. But I'm going to have to read one through four in order for you to get the understanding of the setting. But three and four is the two main verses that we're going to be looking at. And so while you're getting your word together and you're getting your mind and maybe you're trying to get your house quiet or whatever it is that you may be doing. I want you to just get your mind straight right now. We want to go to a prayer, go into prayer. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this awesome day. God, I know it's going to be a blessed day, God, because whatever I go through, you're right there with me. Lord, I thank you for never leaving me nor forsaking me. I thank you, Father, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. God, I thank you, God, because your presence is always right there. God, you're always right there. Anytime, anytime we need your peace, anytime we need your comfort, you are right there to give it to us. So, God, I thank you for right now just adding your peace to those that need peace. I thank you right now, Father, for adding your healing to those that are standing in need for healing. God, I thank you right now for adding love to those that want to be loved. God, send people to them that are just going to give them some encouragement, just out of the blue, God. Just a hug, just a, just a, a, a warm welcome or something, God, that lets them know that, God, you heard their prayer. Father, I thank you for being a provider for those that need something. For those that need something, some kind of maybe even emotional stability. I thank you, God, for providing for that. I thank you, God, for being more than just enough. I thank you, God, for being abundant, being abundant in all that you do. 
God, I thank you for encouraging our faith. God, I thank you for not killing us in our stupidity and the things that we do to just absolutely go completely against the word of God. I thank you, God, for just doing all that you do, laying us in a, a, a warm bed to sleep at night or even a, a secure place, God. Or maybe even for those that may may even be on the street, God, you give, a, get, you give us peace as you, we sleep. So, God, I thank you for all of it, God, all of it, God. And I thank you for just being you. Thank you for not giving up on us but allowing us to continue to feel you and allowing us to continue in our assignment, allowing us to continue to be encouraged. I thank you, God, for it all because only you do it. Nobody else, nothing else, but only you can provide what you do and give us the peace about it. So thank you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hopefully by now you've gotten your word to Joshua, the second chapter. One through four. This is a kind of familiar uh, passage. Kind of familiar. I don't know how many. You might kind of spot it as soon as I start reading it. But it's, it has something that God gave me. And I'm going to be honest with you. As I was studying this this morning. I'm like God. I know you got something. But I'm not getting it right now. But as I began to get my clothes ironed. And all that stuff. God began to reveal stuff. And reveal stuff. And reveal stuff. And so. Let's go into the scripture. Joshua, the second chapter, one through four. It says, now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Achaia Grove to spy, sec to spy secretly, saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told to the king of Jericho saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. Verse 3. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Verse 4. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they, they where they were from. All right. So listen. One through one and two is like I said was a setting, and I'll go through it briefly just so we can kind of paint the setting in our minds. It says now Joshua the son of Nun, verse one. Joshua the son of Nun sent to sent out two men from Achaia Grove to spy secretly, saying, "Go view the land, especially Jericho." Now these two men were sent out on assignment. By Joshua, the son of the nun, son of Nun, which Joshua in this situation represented the leader, um, the head in this situation. So now when I say this, I want you to look at Joshua as uh, a godly persona. What, I, what am I saying? Joshua, like I said, being the head, I want you to think of Joshua as the one that orchestrates this situation, which we know God orchestrates it. So Joshua is representing God. That's basically where I'm going. And so Joshua sent out two, two, uh, two spies secretly saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. That was their assignment. Okay. God sends us out on our assignment. So why two? Why two? I kept asking God, why two? What is it, the significance of two? And I was like, God, what is it? And again, like I said, I'm scratching my head and I'm like, God, what is up, man? You, I know you sent me this for a reason. What does it mean? What does this story mean? Listen, two, you and Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Two represents you and Jesus Christ. So when God sends us out on an assignment, understand we're not going into this assignment alone. OK, God is always he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Remember, I always talk like that. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. They're one. OK, so the Holy Spirit, I say that the Holy Spirit is whom God sends with us because the Holy Spirit is on the inside. And so the two represents 
me, you, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So it's you and the Holy Spirit. All right? So now, verse... Okay, now we're still on verse 1. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. All right. God sends us out. Here we go. We go on to this assignment. And like I said, your assignment could be your marriage. Your assignment could be being a trying to be an awesome mother. It could be trying to be an awesome dad, uh, awesome husband, uh, awesome uncle. So many, so many titles that you can put there. It could be you just trying to be an awesome child of God or an awesome neighbor. Okay. So it says, so they went out and, and came to the house of Rahab. So now they got in the assignment and they've launched out into their assignment. And now they have strategized, okay? They have strategized the two, okay? Going by the two spies, but we're talking about, of course, it, this represents us, us in, in the Holy Spirit, okay? So they strategized and come up with a plan. They said, look, man, you know, we're going out to this, to this foreign land. We're going out to spy it out. Um, so we got to be inconspicuous. Where is a place that we can go and we not be recognized and look that crazy? So all these, they're going to search out the land and they're looking everywhere and they're like okay uh let me see let me see well hmm there's a harlot house trap hey let's be honest harlot you know what a harlot is if you don't know what a harlot is google it uh it's a prostitute okay well you ain't got to google it so they said where in the world could we go and not be recognized or not look so odd being in this community well they decided to go to a harlot's house a harlot house has a lot of traffic, okay, so here they go, they decide, let's check out this harlot house, we should be safe there, people come and go all the time, uh, they probably wouldn't think anything different, okay, so here they go, Ver again, at the end of verse 1, it says, they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there, okay, it has nothing to do with sin, let's get that straight, it has nothing to do with sin, okay, this is them strategizing, but God had already ordered their steps. You got to remember this. The steps of a righteous man is ordered, and it's just not man. It's all of us that are children of God. So, again, I said the two represents us in Christ. When God sends us out, Holy Spirit, remember God said, I never leave you nor forsake you. Remember I said that. All right. So now, let's go on to verse 2. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, Men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. Now, when God sends us out on assignment and we get out and you know us because we like to strategize. We like to try to come up with the best plan, which is nothing wrong with that. The only thing about that, God doesn't always go by our plans. OK, and it's important for us to understand that we have to be flexible and let God do what he does, because what happens is if we stick to a strict plan will miss God. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about last week about tradition, uh, religion. If we stick to a certain surefire plan, it's like it's got to work this way. We'll miss everything God's doing. And next thing you know, we got ourselves in a, a horrible situation down in a ditch because we have done this thing our way. God, we got the marching orders, but we left the Holy Spirit back there somewhere and we went headstrong into our assignment. And now we're trying to figure out, God, why did you leave me? Well, you left him back there. Let him catch up. Stop running so fast. Move when he say move. Okay, so anyway, we're going back. They have come to the harlot's house. And now the king of Jericho has come to, um, well, has sent out. Let me see. Let's read it. Verse 2. And it was told to the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So snitch. Uh, or somebody went and told the king of Jericho that the two spies are at the Harlot's house. So now it looks like, okay, it looks like, oh man, this thing's about to be crazy. We're already outnumbered. We are in a situation where uh, we don't exactly know who's going to, what we're going to run into. We're outnumbered here. We're trying to do the best we can. You and I, we're in our assignment. And we're out here doing the best we can, but you got the world constantly coming at us. And if you're being a, a dad or mom or husband and wife, you got the enemies, the devil's system. You got all these things of the world. You trying to raise your children the best way you know how in a godly mindset and, and give them good morals. But 
the enemy, the devil has come with this tactic and that tactic. And everything the devil presents, it looks great on the outside. It got the flashing lights, the neon lights. Hey, look at me. Look at me. The world is sending out this and you're like, no. And it, it, it gets to a point where it seems like the word of God seems boring to your children. But the world seems exciting. And it's like, but you stand back on your assignment and you're praying, you're fasting. You're like, God, help my children. Take care of my people, God. Take care of my family. God, take care of all this. And you're on your assignment. You're like, God, man, it seems like I'm outnumbered. It seems like nobody understands. God, I, I need some help here. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, the two. Okay, so he's right there. So now this is kind of what is starting to, I can only imagine the spies is like, man, I think we're safe. We're safe. But here comes somebody that told the king of Jericho, which looks like, and I'm going to say this is the opposing system, the world, or, 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 or those, those things that are attacking whom you're trying to protect. If it's your nieces and nephews, your, your loved ones, your neighbors, or whomever. So now, go on to verse 3. These are the two verses God really sent me to. And it says, So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. All right. So now, the king of Jericho this person, again, is going to represent the system, the opposing party, the opposing system, the world system or whatever it is while you are on your assignment that uh, that they represent the ones that is trying to hinder what God is doing through you. And so now it looks like King Jericho, he didn't he didn't come and now sent word to, to Rahab uh, that, hey, we know they're here. Send them out. Listen here. So now you and I, we're on our assignment, and it looks like the more you pray, the more you fast, the more you read the word of God, you see the walls closing in. And you're like, God, man, this thing is crazy. I know I'm not going to lose with you, so I don't want to speak that, but this thing is getting a little rough. But listen here, just like God ordered their steps and they thought they chose the best inconspicuous spot, which was the harlot Rahab's house. God ordered their steps. God had already chose Rahab before they was even involved in this situation. God already chose our relief packet, our relief, our help. In the midst of our assignment. And so when the enemy comes. And it looks like the walls is closing in. Just like God used the King Jericho. To come at the two spies of, of Israel. When God allows the enemy to come at you. And it looks like the walls is closing in. It's on purpose. Stay on your assignment. I know it looks crazy. Stay on your assignment. I know it looks like. Man, things are starting to fall apart. Stay on your assignment. Because look, when you stay on your assignment, you get to see what God is really going to do. Because it has nothing to do with your strength. It has all to do with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. It has all to do with you being obedient to God. It has all to do with God strengthening your faith to let you know that I don't care how chaotic it looks. I don't care how many kings of Jericho is coming at you. I don't care how many laws that are passed that goes against the word of God. I don't care how many people that can't stand you that come at you. And it looks like there's a thousand on my right hand and 10,000 on my left. But if you look at Psalms 91, God got a passage for that. And he says, 10,000 should fall on my right and a thousand should fall on my left. And I might have them mixed up but nothing will come near your dwelling. You would only see the reward of the wicked. So then when you in the midst of your assignment and people are coming at you and it seems like the walls is closing in, understand that God is right there with you. The Holy Spirit is in you and that's God. And so he said, tell me one person that can outsmart God. Tell me one person that has ever outsmarted God. So now you might say, man, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of laws. 
it's a lot of opposition, but we got the winner with us. He don't lose. So tell me how I'm going to lose. I can't lose as long as he stay with me. And he promised I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So going back to verse 3, it says, So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out the country. Verse 4, Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, Yes, the men, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. Now, we're not going to go into five and the rest of them. But when you look at verse four, you see a deflection. See, the one that God sent you, sent, sent to you, and you're like, man, man, this is crazy. I'm in the midst of my assignment and the walls has closed in. But all, all of a sudden, just like going back to the Israelites and the Red Sea, God did some supernatural and parted the Red Sea. Well, now, if you look at the world standards in this situation, two spies sent to a harlot house, and the world would say, surely you can't trust a harlot to protect somebody she don't know. But God had already ordered their steps. God had already gone before them. Now, God not only protected the spies, but God is being so wise like he is that he sent them there to mainly protect this lady, the harlot, and her bloodline. Okay? Her bloodline, which if I remember correctly, Jesus comes through her bloodline. If I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but I believe I'm right. So if you understand that God has a deeper meaning, a deeper purpose, a deeper purpose than you and I could ever come up with. So when you and I are in the midst of our situation, we're in the midst of our assignment, and it looks like it's about to just fall apart, well, all of a sudden, something that you never thought would happen, happens in the midst of your assignment, and it blows every demonic scheme completely out the water. If you start to see the enemy's tactics fall apart on your left, you see it fall apart on their right, and it's like, man, my heart was jumping out my chest, but now I'm starting to be at peace because I'm seeing that God really does take care of his own. Well, guess what? I hope you really remember that because, because there's constant story after story after story that God has taken care of his own. And so in verse 4, you see where the two spies were protected by an unlikely source. Why? Because God had already gone before them. God had already worked it out. So now look at your assignment. Look at the assignment that God has you in. And you might say, man, I, I didn't give up. Don't give up. But it's fine to get out of the way. And when I say get out of the way, I'm saying... Stop fighting so much. Allow God to speak and you listen and walk. Listen to what God is telling you. Ask God to speak a little louder if you can't hear it. Speak a little clearer, Lord, so that I can make sure I'm walking according to you and what you want done. And when you do that, you'll be able to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And just like here with the two spies, like all, hey, all craziness had broke out and now we outnumbered in a foreign land and the only person we can trust right now that we, we're not sure of is an harlot. God already had spoke to the harlot. God had already ordered the steps for the harlot. And so now she says, hey, y'all chill up right here. And it's going a little further. Y'all chill. Y'all go up on the roof. I'm going to tell them y'all ain't there. Send them out and tell them, hey, they they went through, they went through the um, they gone already, and, and, and that was right before the gate closed for the town. Because see, when the gate closed, it had to stay locked until the morning. And so she told them they already came. I don't know where they came from, but they already come and they gone. And so now the people, the, the people that came to see the spies, they gone outside the gate. The gate is locked. She tells the two spies when she got on the roof, hey, y'all chill when they leave out. I'm going to put a rope down and let y'all shimmy on down the rope 
onto the wall because her house was on the wall of the city. Y'all go hide over here. In the, I think she said the mountains. Chill out there for three days. When they By that time, the ones that's looking for you, then they came back into the city and then y'all free to go. And she said, the only thing I ask for y'all to do is protect my, when y'all come to tear this place all the places, protect my family. Protect my mama, my daddy, my cousins, my uncle, all the ones that she named. Y'all promised me that y'all going to take care of them. And guess what God says? This is how God puts this thing. He tells the, the two spies, tell the harlot Rahab to bring them into your house. Somebody get that. Bring them into your house. Children of God, let us stay in God. Let us stay in step with God. Let's stay in the Holy Spirit. Let's stay with God because in God there is safety. So the harlot tells them, uh, where the, the two spies tell the harlot to bring them into your house so that when we come through to tear this place all to pieces, those that are in your house, we're going to make sure they're not touched. Put a put a uh, uh, put some on your on your on your window seal. That way we know not to mess with your house. And the, I'm going to tell those that are with me not to mess with your house. And now if they stay in the house, if we stay in God, follow me with this. If we stay, if the two spies tell Harlot Rahab, if your people stay in your house, then. The blood would be on us if somebody go in the house, but now if they come out the house, if they come out of safety. If they come out of the safety that God provided and they come out into the street and if we tear them all to pieces, guess what? That's on them. So guess what? God is saying the same thing to us. I got you. Stay in the safe place, the safe zone. Stay in me. Stay connected to me. And if you stay connected to me, I will protect you. But now if you go out and do your own thing and you step out of the house you step out of the arc of safety, you step out of the safety zone and decide to do things your way. And when the enemy come against you, then you that's on you. But if you stay on your assignment and if you stay in God and you continue to listen to the voice of God, you continue to stay, continue to stay petitioning to God, continue to pray to God, continue to ask God what I do next. Continue to listen to him. Continue to do it God's way. That if God promises that he's going to give us the victory. He's going to take care of us. Stay in your assignment and understand that God did not send you in your assignment alone. It was two spies. We got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us. Stay in your assignment. Understand that God is right there with us, walking through the assignment with us and is wanting to lead us through this assignment, not just for you, but all those that you are in the assignment with. Remember Rahab and her whole family got saved because she helped out two spies? Well, guess what? God is trying to save all those in the assignment with you. He's trying to save all those in the assignment with you. And although it may look a little crazy, it might look like the walls are coming in, but understand that God designed that on purpose. Just so that once you get the victory, you'll know it was never you that done it. It was not your smarts. It was not your degree. It was not your family last name. It was not your looks. It wasn't your money. It was God that brought you through. And so I'm saying to you, be encouraged, stay on your assignment, but understand that you must stay connected to the Lord in order to complete your assignment in a victorious manner. You have to stay connected to the Lord and God will bring you through every time. Why? How do I know? I got scripture after scripture after scripture that tells me so. Also, when we do a God's way, God has his stamp on it now. God's way means that it represents God. And so God does not fall. He does not fail. So when you do a God's way, you're now putting God as the leader. He's put a stamp on it. And now this whole entire situation represents God. God is not going to allow him to fall. He's not going to allow his image to fall. He's not going to allow his children to fall. He's not going to allow you to fall. Stay in your assignment. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, again for your word. God, I thank you for those you sent here to watch and to be encouraged. Father, I thank you for encouraging me. I thank you for the body of Christ, God, that is still moving forward, representing you and showing the world in you there was total victory. So, God, I thank you, God. I thank you for just being a little piece of the puzzle of what you're doing in these years, in this season. Thank you, God. And I know that we shall have the victory because we are in the body of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Prayerfully, you got some out of this? I know I did. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Y'all stay encouraged, stay on your assignment, and understand, with God, you got the victory. I love y'all, and God's willing, I'll catch you Tuesday. Bye-bye.